In part one, I showed um, how to make these. Uh, you can see they are now still got a little bit of a thud instead of the tink. Um, give them a couple more days of curing um, and the polymer reaction completing. Um, and these things will be ready. Back here, I've got one. I made this a long time ago. It's actually a generation one, maybe a generation two. Actually, it's a generation one. Um, uh, composite and then it broke apart it's an inductor um, and I hit it beat it and it busted apart and so then I coated it in um, generation 2 um, composite and it's a lot of fun to play with but it will um, um, do some weird stuff it seems to store uh, power to the point where it can hurt you um, but it's a lot of fun to play with um, I don't know a lot about it yet and exactly how that's working. It's not a AC frequency and running through it, so it doesn't make a lot of sense um, exactly what's going on. But when you wrap that thing with aluminum and you connect into the aluminum run series or parallel current through that thing, run current through it, it does very weird stuff. It's an inductor coil through... through I mean, I'm going to make one now with the Generation 3 um, composite. It is a much more cathodic composite, much higher conductivity composite. I, I, I don't know. Maybe when I said that it's a much more cathodic, much more cathodic composite, it's actually, that may actually be a lie. But this is much more uh, conductive, um, which is the reason that somebody like me would accidentally say that it's more cathodic um, it's probably not more cathodic it's just a higher conductivity con composite uh, graphite is one of the most cathodic substances on earth I think it's right next to diamond and then no, no metal is above it you can use these to turn pretty much any metal into a primary battery um, you can also use them to turn pretty much any metal into the anode of a rechargeable battery. Um, aluminum works great. You can then take two of these, one of them being that becomes the anode, one of them becomes the cathode, and just charge directly between them. Um, and I've got some Generation 2 over here that... Um, I've been doing exactly that this piece of aluminum so you can see it looks like a little cesspool. Well, it is it is um, uh, There's coffee in there. There's a little bit of milk in there. There's a little bit of chlorine in there There's a little bit of salt in there. There's a little bit of sodium hydroxide in there. There's all Coffee uh, may have already said that oh cereal, you know high calcium cereal um, bread high calcium bread and this thing so right now what you're seeing right here is there is no aluminum in this cell it's just two X newbie composites for the anode and three X newbie composites for the cathode and this thing is awesome it, it's it, it but without that aluminum in there it doesn't have as high of a voltage so but it will with the aluminum in there I can boost it sort of helps boosting up the voltage uh, it's, it's a very interesting cell this is a study of its own this one's awesome this guy right here uses a very high grade aluminum the pH of this water is last time I checked I think it's 7.2 um, it there there's nothing in that that is th this thing is remarkable it holds a tremendous voltage uh, and it um, continuously re recharges it's, it doesn't show any oxidation down in the aluminum uh, any any heavy oxidation you know these coke can things they 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 oxidize they they turn to junk they don't hold and they're coated in paint and and the coke cans these things they're coated in all kinds of different stuff so they they don't it's junk it's trash it's not supposed to it, it's just proves that it'll work on junk and trash this is not junk this is not trash um, it's getting dusty and dirty but it's aluminum that's uh, high grade 
and it is awesome. I pulled the end off of my It's uncharged. It's been discharging through that light for the last two days. It'll still throw some amperage out of it. Of course, it is a lower voltage amperage. This is going to, this number will turn around and go up real quick. Again, my connection here sucks, to say the least. Now, I can recharge this Twelve. yeah watch this so I got it on 12 volts um, I'll show the voltage on that thing too uh, typically I like to run 12 volts through two cells so I'm going to connect it to the black over here <laughs> All right. and connect the red over here I'm getting 12 12 watts of power into it right now approximately it's showing one amp of flow through this now I mean it's I should let it charge for probably a full five minutes or something, you know, to get to get a, a at least a watt of charge into it. But I'm gonna show y'all something here. I'm gonna take my charger off. I'm on voltage. So now there's 1.27 volts across that cell. see it will dump power uh, if I if I charge it longer we're, it'll th start throwing half an amp um, and again the pH of this is next to nothing it's just salt and chlorine that's all that's in that bucket is salt uh, iodized salt the iodine uh, definitely plays some sort of factor and then salt in that one the pH is 7 I'm looking for my pH meter. There it is. Just to show you guys. And I also want to see, you know, if the pH has changed. Um, you know, I've charged, discharged, beat this thing to hell and back. Um, so here we go. Sorry. Interesting. I may have spilled something in it. I probably did accidentally spill something in it that has boosted the pH up some. Uh, or maybe it's just because it's discharged uh, that the pH is up. Very, very interesting cell, an extremely interesting study in its own. Um, the aluminum oxide, according to a lot of my study, is the aluminum oxide reacts with... Um, sodium hypochlorite or actually it catalyzes sodium hypochlorite and turns it back into salt and um, and then when I charge it becomes sodium hypochlorite again but it creates a byproduct hydrochlorous acid um, which would be the reason that this thing seems to go back and forth um, with that pH that's cool that is super cool Again, these are just junk, junk, junk cells that I use for um, uh, voltage booster, amperage booster. I don't know. You can charge them. They're cool when you charge them. I've seen them run half an amp easy 
uh, through them with a full charge on them. Um, it's probably some capacitance going on. It might be a little bit of, I, I don't know, it's a very interesting cell over here too. But this one, this one's the coolest because the aluminum looks like it's probably going to last a very, 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 very long time. Um, hundreds of years, thousands of discharges and recharges. Uh, very, very interesting, super, super, super cool study here. Um, of course, I need to clean it and do it right. And uh, now that I know um, kind of what's going on here, I need to study this more. This is a very, very interesting cell. Knowing your aluminum grade's huge, you know, these Coke cans, every single one of them, uh, the, the aluminum's different. So that makes it difficult. Um, it makes it extremely difficult to really know what's going on. Um, but this is super cool. You know, this needs to be studied. I can do what's called doping on the anode side over here. Just adding magnesium carbonate to the mix or, or something, you know, maybe I add it over here and then charge it over to here. I, I don't know yet. Um, I need to work with some universities and stuff. Uh, compost, obviously, can be a great electrolyte for a system like this. Um, and and that, that is the only thing that's charging and discharging in here is the electrolyte because it's, these are, you know, graphite. Uh, ex newbie uh, anode graph ex newbie composites these are graphite ex newbie composites they were all exactly the same until i charged them and i forced holes to develop in here and forced electrons to get into the, the i don't know um i don't know exactly but that that is awesome uh it's just kind of a compost bunch of junk i would not drink that um but it would it'd be great for watering plants. So that's part two of how to build some. And then a little discussion on generation two. And the many millions of different ways generation two have proven themselves to be able to change the world. Generation three is 40 to 50% more powerful than these and has the potential to be much more powerful than these um, as I become more educated on electrolytes different aluminum alloys uh, all your aluminum foils are some type of alloy um, all of your cans are some type of alloy the cans also have some weird coatings on them obviously paint and there's also some sort of plastic film that you'll find on them uh, I've done a lot of work with what I thought was just good aluminum um, uh, flashing that they sell at Home Depot. Well, when you buy this aluminum flashing from Home Depot, I would say that 50 to 75 percent of this thickness is a really terrible polymer film, uh, plastic film. Um, and it, they're junk. There's barely any aluminum in there. They're taking aluminum foil and coating it in plastic and calling it, coating it in enough plastic that it makes the aluminum foil seem like there's aluminum foil there. But that's junk. Um, they're suing Home Depot for selling two by fours that are an inch and a half by three and a half, even though that's standard. And they're getting sued for it. But this is what they need to get hounded for. There are barely any aluminum in that. There's my big cathode. It's a generation two, which kind of makes me want to cry. I'm probably going to wrap it up in some more copper and then put my generation three on top of it. Um, she's awesome. I like her. Uh, big. Well, I mean, not very big. Certainly not a football field, but it gets the point across.